cannot explain how glad this makes me that Bullhorn Betty is being called out on her shit by bigger, real, true crime creators. And that just makes me happy as fuck, man. Happy as fuck. Gray Hughes has already called her out. Chasing Truth has called her out. I mean, and now Duty Ron and Mystery Maven. Like, come on, man. I'm so glad for this. We've been wanting this. And uh, it just shows that the word spreads around and awareness is brought. And that's what we strive for. So this is what we've been waiting for. Let's address. get it. Users of the court's audio streaming service are reminded of the general prohibition against the photographing, recording, and rebroadcasting of court proceedings, including those held by telephone or video conference. See California Rule of Court 1.150 and this court standing order number 19-0005. Any recording of a court proceeding is absolutely prohibited without a court order. Violation of this order of the court is punishable as contempt pursuant to Code of Civil Procedure Section 1209. Because if it's not a court order, like the person I spoke to on the phone never told me I could not um, rebroadcast this, and I can tell you that. I'll, I'll read this all to you, and then we'll make a determination whether we're going to move forward with the. Uh, otherwise, I'll record it and rebroadcast it later. If, that, if the requirement's not to have it as it's going on, we'll do it a different way because I don't see how other pe how news organizations are taking clips out if you can't rebroadcast it. So the cameras in the courtroom under Rule 1.150 says camera rules. Ju judges use discretion when allowing cameras and other recordings in their courtroom. So this may be this may be the general rule, and, he, and just like we did with Leilani, every time we go in there, they vote on whether we can have rights to um, a play or a record or audio or visual before that hearing. They're going to be going through it again in the morning before we get started. They're going to rule on who and how and everything like that for the um, general rule. So court standing order 1905. It says. All orders uh, supersede all previous standing orders related to media activity, use of photography, uh, recording and photography devices in the courthouse facility. I'm not in the courthouse facility. The purpose of this standing order shall protect all persons with business in the Superior Court, California current courthouse and court facilities to ensure safety, secure and orderly conduct of hearings, trial and other court proceedings and facilitates the safe, secure and effective handling of court business. Uh, prohibition. Now, again, this is inside the courthouse. It clearly states this. I'll reread this. This order supersedes all previous standing orders related to media activity and the use of recording or photography devices in courthouse facilities. Prohibition. Photography, recording, and broadcasting in courthouse facilities of Kern County Superior Court shall be conducted solely in pursuit, uh, or solely pursuant to California Rule 1.150, which gives the discretion to the judge. With case law, California Rule 1.150, no photographs, video recordings, or audio, audio recordings may take place anywhere uh, or anywhere in any courthouse facility with any device capable of uh, photographing, recording, or broadcast unless permitted by a court order. Again, I'm not in the courthouse. This is, this is saying that I can do it. So I don't know where the uh, justification that this is. I'm reading it, and it's basically saying that if I was in the courthouse, I can't be bringing in um, media equipment and recording it. She, it, it says right here, California Rule 1.1. I just read it all to you, literally verbatim. I'm literally looking at the order and read it to you guys verbatim. Today, uh, I'm coming live to you about a topic that, you know, I don't enjoy speaking about this stuff. Transmitting and rebroadcasting intentionally live court audio is against the law. And I'm here to tell you today, as a public service announcement to my friends and to the community, it's not something that you should be doing intentionally. It's not something that you should be doing to benefit yourself. This is a disgraceful act by anybody who is claiming to seek justice for our boys. This is a very, very complex case that involves the murders of two small children, Orin and Orson West, sincere and classic. They were three and four years old at the time they were reported missing. This is now a murder investigation. Who in their right mind, in their right frame of mind, would intentionally rebroadcast audio? And I'm gonna show you the actual disclaimer, the law that was put on the district court's website. We're going to move forward now to the comments from Duty Ron. Okay, I have lost an enormous amount of respect to Duty Ron, and here's why: because he is a law enforcement agent. He was somebody. He's somebody that is has trained to investigate cases, and he has one person or several people going to him. Now, this so it is a little upsetting for me that somebody like that that has made mistakes in court hearings that have actually disrupted court hearings not be a little more accommodating or understanding to somebody that made a mistake. I give thanks and praise to each and every one of you, and I'm so thankful that we have such a great, respectful community. This is not to uh, the folks who are here and that are complying with justice, complying with what the law states and what we're supposed to do and what we're not supposed to do. So by no means is this a, uh, a dig to any of you great people who are following this case and all of the cases that we cover. Um, the majority of us want to seek justice and comply with the law. We're law-abiding citizens. So let me just get that clear and, get that and put that out there. So I was reading the rules. I had spoken to the courts. They provided me the link to stream, but here's why I lost the respect in Duty Ron. It is because he chose not to 
look into the matter before he opened his mouth. That is a major no-no for law enforcement. When you have somebody um, working a case for you, when you have somebody investigating a case, one thing you do not want from a law enforcement officer is them jumping the gun or making conclusions based on conjecture or tattletale. Uh, Jess, you, uh, you and I communicated yesterday when all of our followers and all of our friends who are engaged in this case were messaging us. They qualify for criminals, and that's criminal activity, when it's done intentionally and knowingly. And um, it, it's, it's just despicable because it's a slap in the face to justice and you're hurting the kids here who do not have the voice. These babies are no longer uh, able to talk. Absolutely. And just to uh, tag on to what you said, the sad reality is that these two little innocent sweet boys, they were victims already. And I think anyone who is aware of this case knows that these children, so many people failed these poor children and look at where we are today. And the fact that I see people streaming this and uh, like, it just, it triggers me to put it in like way, but what it does in my mind, it's re-victimizing these poor children. Right. And that needs to stop. Anyone who cares about justice for these children and for our justice system in the United States needs to stop doing this. It's absolutely atrocious. And generally, public trials, that's what we want. We want trials open to the public. We want transparency. Um, a defendant under a Sixth Amendment right has the public uh, trial. It's a right to them. The right to a public trial is guaranteed under the Sixth Amendment. Um, that helps to promote things like fairness, accountability. It's like a checks and balance system, basically. But there's exceptions to that where a judge can limit it. And one of those instances is where there's minors, so the children, the four boys, the other children of the West might testify. Um, it's also to prevent harm, uh, not just to the victims here, but also because of the defendant's right to a fair trial to an unbiased jury. And if you follow this case, there was a lot of sensationalism, a lot of jagalunish behavior, to borrow oh, yeah. Ron's term. <laughs> and judges are increasingly starting to notice these things happening. They're starting to recognize, uh, there's even been judicial conferences in the United States where judges are starting to look at the impact of social media on fairness, on Sixth Amendment issues, on all of this. These boys deserve more than this. And we all should get together in this community and say, no, just stop. So a bunch of people went in there and said, oh, Bullhorn Betty's doing this, and Bullhorn Betty's doing that, and Bullhorn Betty said this, and he's getting secondhand information and he's running with it. This is somebody that we trust not to do that, in all fairness. And for it to come from somebody that actually disrupted a court hearing by accident is even further frustrating for Bullhorn Betty because it's okay for him to make mistakes, but nobody else, right? So Judy Ron, maybe pull some of that earwax out of your ear uh, and maybe do some investigation before you decide to slander somebody on your live in front of thousands of people. Wait for my cease and desist, it will be coming. Um, just because you didn't say my name doesn't mean you didn't imply me, doesn't mean you didn't attach me to those statements. And that's very bad for you. Very, very bad for you. The bottom line here is, is that we all want to hear about this trial, right? We do. Uh, and, and, and folks want to see and, and, and see the um, the people who are testifying and, and, and the witnesses that are coming in and so forth. But again, to save the integrity of not just the investigation and the boys getting justice, it's it's, it's for all parties involved here. Our criminal yes. justice system, you are afforded the right to a fair and impartial jury and a fair and impartial trial. And the judge has to balance that um, by doing and putting these restrictions in place. You have multiple sources, and I'm going to show that to them here now. There's multiple news outlets that are in court, or inside the court. There are reporters that are texting the play-by-play -play on Twitter. You could go to Twitter and you could look at that. Um, I'm just going to play, Jess, if you don't mind, a little piece from yesterday. And this is going to go over the attorneys uh, and the, the judge making a statement after the afternoon recess yesterday. This was Friday, yes. uh, April 14th. This is when all of the, this crap went on in the morning. One YouTube person, and I'm not going to even give them my platform or the, their names. I'm not going to put them out there. You guys know who we're speaking about. Um, took it upon themselves to stream this audio and said, and doubled down and did something even more heinous, is said that they had permission from the court. And this reporter was embedded in the court. So he's asked by the in-studio reporter, what happened yesterday? I'm going to put it, put it all the way back because I think it's important that everybody hears this. And for those of you who are following the... Um, people who are committing criminal acts by rebroadcasting this, I would encourage you to, if anything that you take from this, and listen, you can take out all your anger, all you want on me, and say that you're, I'm, I'm bullying these people, and Jess and I are bullying these people. No, no, they're committing crimes. It's a crime, and they're gonna say it here, you can hear it, and then we're gonna go to the website right after this, and I'm gonna show you what those people were able to see with their own eyes, and said, oh, I'm not gonna listen to this. I have permission to do this. That's the, the biggest load of horseshit that I've ever heard. Uh, nobody got permission. All right, let me let this play. I'm starting to get a little hopped up here, so. Uh, let's let it play. 
live stream by Kern County Superior Court, but some people have been, we came to understand today, been rebroadcasting this live audio on other platforms. How did the judges or the judge address that issue today? Yes, that was brought to the court's attention. He actually, he addressed it yesterday. Um, where he said that anyone who is rebroadcasting this audio or using another platform to, to broadcast it, uh, he said that's illegal. He said he made it clear during his court order that you were only to go to the Kern County Superior Court website to listen to the audio. Anyone doing uh, anything otherwise to provide that is doing it illegally. Um, and court public affairs officer, Kristen Davis, she also addressed the issue. She said that public access to the courts is extremely important and that the actions of a few individuals who violate the court order won't stop them from making sure that the public has access to the proceedings. So there you have it. So um, just FYI, mistakes happen all the time on YouTube. We hope that when we make mistakes on YouTube that it doesn't cost us our channel. Sometimes some of the mistakes that we make on here cost us our channel, right? And that is exactly what my haters would want. So my question is, why do they care what I do over here? If something I do over here is illegal and it's going to cost me my channel, that's what they want anyways, right? They also, they also misunderstood because I intentionally um, said things the way I said things. I've got the court order for the West trial, and I plan on doing live coverage of the West trial. They went all over YouTube saying that I'm going to run the West trial live. Now, one time did I say I was going to violate a court order that was in my possession. I don't break the law. Period. I've already drama up just a little bit this morning over the Duty Ron uh, stuff, which I don't, you know, many of you guys know. I used to like Duty Ron. I always talked about him on here. Uh, but he lets too many people in his ears that, that it, it, and he does no um, research on the facts before he opens his trap. And I have a problem with that. I have a huge problem with that, especially you stating that you're, you know, law enforcement. We know that that's a big no-no in law enforcement. Why do we know that? Because I deal with sheriffs all the time. Um, you know, you can have, you can have your word, but get your facts straight. Get your facts straight because we all make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes on here. Everybody. But that's okay. That's okay. I didn't come out with a big, big, horrible video about you and your disruption of a court proceeding. Didn't do that. But believe me, maybe I should. Maybe I should put your deficiencies on front and center to everybody on YouTube as well. You know, what's good for the goose and all and those that live in glass houses and stuff like that, you know. But what, what's your thoughts on this reporting, Jess? Well, this guy's right on. And then what was interesting, and this reporter just alluded to it, was that right after all of this happened, and I believe the court was made aware of some of this, um, the judge started the afternoon session by making that announcement, by telling people, this is illegal. We don't want you to do this. Follow the order. So he's right on, and he's right there to, to tell you what's happening. And, you know, I've heard through the grapevine that a certain creator is saying, oh, I found a loophole and blah, blah, blah. Now, the problem with that is that you got to interpret all of this stuff with the spirit of what the judge is saying. The judge clearly has said, I don't want anyone streaming the audio. The bottom line is that this is a privilege and the judge at any time can decide to disable this. So none of us want that, you know, and the boy story needs to be out there. This trial needs to be out there. There's not enough coverage on this case. You know, we need to make sure that people know what happened here and we need justice to prevail. And the only way that's going to happen is if we come together as a community and really try to support, you know, the, the victims to support justice uh, and to do what's right. Yeah. So. And, and just, I, I couldn't agree with you anymore. Um, you know, finding a loophole is, is, is something that somebody does that's not interested in justice for the boys. That is just total horseshit. To try to find a loophole and get around what court order is, is just, I mean, that's right. just despicable to do that. So no. if you like that type of behavior, in other words, okay, so I, I want to try to find a way to uh, break the law and, and yeah. go around and find a loophole. That's what criminals do. Just to set the record straight. Um, yeah, we don't, I, I could care less whether I'm on Duty Ron's show or any other of those cockroaches because he's about to move over to a cockroach channel anyways. So kudos to you, Duty Ron, for being an idiot. So the week, the week is starting out with Duty Ron getting the uh, certificate of idios, idiocy. Uh, from the Bullhorn Betty channel this week. So so if you haven't heard me loud enough, Duty Ron, listen to me now. I could care less. You know, if you if you didn't make mistakes, then it would be one thing. But we all know everybody is imperfect and everybody makes mistakes. But that's okay. That's okay. We'll be watching for yours and we'll make sure it's on front and center. And we'll put your face on a thumbnail and everything, right? Thumbnail and everything. Talking about your deficiencies and defects. I encourage you guys to go and look at this stuff. Read what's here. Read these attachments. Here's the civil code uh, and procedures. And it gives you everything here step by step. Jess, I don't know how much more clear this could be. I mean, do they need to um, make it in bright lights and flashing? Uh, I don't right. know, but it's pretty clear and concise. Right, and I will say that I've been in contact with this court now for months because I've been trying to learn as much as I can and make sure that I'm doing everything responsibly and ethically. And this court is very accessible. Um, there is a media contact. I believe her name is Kristen Davis. Her yeah. information is at the Kern County Courthouse. Um, you can talk to the clerks. You can call. So if you have any doubt about what you... You know how you're interpreting this or what you may be allowed or not allowed to do you can simply pick up a phone make a phone call or send an email right. and the court staff is there to help you and i'm sorry but <laughs> i have a hard time believing that they're going to be telling people how to break the court orders that they're supposed right. to be enforcing because i've heard that too and you know, i don't believe that i don't believe it either jess i received a video clip you know our uh, ladies and gents who are uh, in the true crime community that follow us you have you know a lot of people and and, and i have quite a great uh, audience here they sent me some clips, some audio clips of this particular person speaking about getting prior written approval or verbal approval from the right. court. And when I listened to that, I, I, the, the first thing I said was, 
Oh, hell no. You knew that was coming, right? I said something stronger, but you would probably have to use that beep thing that you have over there. Here we go. I'll get a little stronger. <laughs> Pardon my French, but you're an asshole. So, you know, going around and streaming it in your Discord, going to any off YouTube sites uh, to stream this and thinking that that's okay, it's not okay. And, and again, what you risk is a lot of different things that we spoke about here. But the main thing that you risk is not having justice served in a timely fashion. Look across the platform on YouTube. Nobody who has the, the best interest of this case and the boys are, aren't broadcasting this stuff. Nobody. Right. So, and, and it's not a good look. It's not a good look for anybody. No. Let me just other avenues for you to get a play-by-play -play of what happened. You have Twitter. You have listening to the live audio. You have Jess, the mystery maven, who's here live with us now. So these are all places for you to get a, a recap. And it's not like you're left out in, in the cold. You don't need to commit a crime and rebroadcast the audio. So if you know of anybody that's doing it, let us know. Uh, report it to the court. The phone number to the courts are on that page or ways to contact them. You know, um, this stuff should not... You should not be cheerleading people on that are doing this. And, and that, I think that's the best way I could say it. If you are cheerleading on or encouraging someone who's doing this or supporting someone who's doing this, you're supporting criminal activity. Jess, am I wrong? No, this is uh, definitely breaking the law. And um, the consequence of this generally is a civil contempt in the California courts. Um, you know, people have said, well, if this person or if people don't live in the jurisdiction, can the court do anything? And the reality is that, yes, the court can do something. I mean, they could go to YouTube uh, or other platforms where it's being uh, streamed. The court is not stupid, you know, and the judge knows what he's doing and do it. But I do want to almost do the West case just to keep every, just to get everybody to shut up. Okay. Just to get everybody to shut up. There is a way to do the West case that does not violate the order that is completely above board with the order. And I don't deserve to be chewed out because nobody else has done it. And I really could care less what everybody else thinks of Bullhorn Betty. What, what goes on on my channel, what I do is my business. If people don't like it, go tattle on me like you always do, but it's my channel. Who cares? Right. If I do something that violates a court order, I'm going to be the one that's responsible for it. That has to pay for that. And everything else. It was done in error. It was done by accident. That means it was unintentional. I'm not going to now intentionally do something that's going to violate a court order when I did it unintentionally. Um, I do everything above board. We follow the law. And for all those little jerks in the back that want to lie to duty Ron, man, talk about if you really cared about him, making him look like a complete ass. That's what you guys did. And it's an embarrassment because he decided to speak about something without doing his fact finding a big no, no. When you're trying to tell people you're law enforcement and you do everything by the book, right? That wasn't by the book. So duty Ron, take the earwax out of your ears and understand. Yes. People make mistakes. Duty Ron. And the way you talked about me, we're going to have some problems with that. I can tell you that. So you'll be hearing from me soon. But you better get your facts together and quit letting those those uh, jellyfish and cockroaches infiltrate your mind and make you do things you don't normally do. Because I'm not the one. <laughs> I ain't the one. It's lies and misrepresentation. And that was all because of you guys. You roaches out there lying and going into his chat room and, and just telling him totally untruths about Bullhorn Betty. Because had you told him the truth, he wouldn't have ran with it. And all you're all after is just the reaction from him. But you have to get the reaction out of pure lies. And that's a true shame pure lies and, and duty ron's too stupid to realize it and, and, and that to me he just lost you'll never hear me at recommending his channel again if this is how he does his criminal investigation and how he acts as a as a um, as a police officer i could do without his kind of policing as a matter of fact his type of policing is exactly what i go after when i go into these communities for corruption so great job buddy great job many people are, are hating on bullhorn betty um for an error uh, again, um, for the West trial, we did get the order. We will be, um, so we're going to make the, the haters' heads turn come Monday. Full warn Betty made a mistake. So what? Sue me, right? Sue me. Um, it's not going to stop our coverage on the case. Wait until Monday. We're going to make the haters' heads explode. Literally freaking explode. And it's all going to be done above board and in accordance with the court's order because you're going to want to be here on Monday. Uh, we're going to make your heads suspend. And uh, like I said, we're going to do it all above board. I've got the um, order. I've read the order. I've researched the order. And we now know what we're allowed to do and what we're not allowed to do. So uh, I don't want to lose coverage on the West case um, because you know, people don't know how to follow the order, but we're going to follow the order and we're going to be doing our live coverage on the case. So we got it all worked out and we're going to be able to proceed um, Monday. I'm going to get it all set up so we can proceed. It's going to be a little different, but we're going to be able to cover it. Have you had a chance to look at that? Yes. What is People's Exhibit 204? Um, it's a message between me and Karen's firm. And 
Is that what you're talking about? Is that so as you can see, Bullhorn Betty did not go live with the West trial today. In my book, that's a win. We have been shouting and hooting and hollering for attention to the injustices that these delusional people think they are providing. Now we've got Duty Ryan coming out and saying, hey, this ain't cool. You got Mystery Maven. I mean, these are good, true crime people, real true crime people saying that what you were doing was not right, Bullhorn, and you just cannot take the criticism. You know what you was doing wasn't right. And I'm just glad bigger creators in the true crime field are hearing it. This is what we strive for. This is the awareness that we want. So let's just keep on keeping on. I wanna thank y'all for watching this video and I'll catch y'all on the flip side.